Hey guys, in this screencast, I'm going to talk a little bit about UV mapping fuel tanks. It seems like a kind of a strange topic to start on, but one of my readers was asking me about it. He had a few questions. Number one, what's the best way to UV map a fuel tank? Number two, why are your UV maps for fuel tanks always broken into pieces? I think what he's referring to is my turbo squid models. Here you see my fuel tank is in three different pieces right next to each other. And on this model, we've got half of the fuel tank up here and the other half down here. So I'll address that. And I guess the other question was workflow. How do you go about doing it? What's the best way to do it? So this workflow I'm going to show you guys here is just something I sort of figured out over the years. There isn't a ton of documentation about UV mapping in general. It's just sort of a workflow that's handed from one person to another. In this case, I'm going to take the task of UV mapping this fuel tank uh, with the intention of putting graphics on it. So, I'm going to start by applying a test pattern to it. This is just a uh, 20, uh, 4096 by 4096 test pattern that I have, and I use it when doing UV mapping because it's really good at showing distortion. It has numbers on it, which means I can see if part of it is backwards. And, uh, you know, it's really obnoxious looking, so it's easy to see. So in this case, it's spherically mapped, like a globe. This is the default for when your object doesn't have a UV map applied to it. If there was, you'd see a little checkerboard right here. So in this case, we can see that it's spherically mapped. We can go to the texture mode. And if we select the object, we see the sphere that's mapping it. We can scale that down a little bit and then move it around. And you can see the mapping sort of follow the tank. Well, follow the sphere, rather. So spherical mapping isn't much use to us. If I switch to the texture view and show the UV mesh, you can see that looks kind of... Oh, it doesn't look like a fuel tank. It doesn't look like one we can paint on. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what strategy I'm going to take for this. So at this point, I think it's probably going to be important to paint the sides of the tank and the top of the tank. So let's treat those as two separate UV areas. Now, we do have this problem though. To UV map a t uh, an object like a fuel tank, you need to unwrap it completely. And that doesn't work with a an enclosed object like this one. This is a completely solid object except for this hole at the top where the fuel cap goes. So the first thing we're going to need to do is get rid of the bottom. We're not going to actually delete any geometry. We're just going to get the mapping of the bottom part out of the way. Best way to do this, I think, is probably to figure out where you'd like to split the tank into two. And for an object like this, I think I'm probably just going to do a loop selection. So that way we get everything from there down. And then I can do a fill selection that lets me select just the bottom, like that. Now, let's get to UV mapping. My workflow for UV mapping is essentially select some polys, apply a flat projection or whatever other projection makes sense and then move it out of the way. And when I've applied a projection to all of the groups of polygons that I'm dealing with, I'm sort of done uh, creating shells and at that point I can start to flatten them out and unwrap them. So let's look at that. Again, this is still a spherical map. It's not what we want. So I'm going to change this to a flat map. Once it's flat, I'm going to rotate it into place. So in this case, I'm just going to choose a projection that fits what I'm doing. I'm just going to make the flat projection sort of point on that vector. And once I'm done with that, I actually just go up here, go to the Tags menu, and say Assign UV Coordinates. It's going to take what I had selected and sort of bake that onto the UV map. If we switch over here to the texture view and go to UV polygon mode, these are custom shortcuts of mine. If you'd like to see it in a standard view, here's the body paint UV edit view. And I believe 
These are the controls for regular polygon point and edge mode. And these are the controls for UV points and UV polys. I don't normally work in this mode, so if I seem a bit lost, it's because I am. So at this point, we have these UV polys selected. And most people think of UV unwrapping as all the polys have to stay on the canvas all at once. It's not true. I can just use my move tool and tear these away, put them off to the side. Hell, I could scale it down if I want. The main thing is that they're out of my way. So those are out of the way. We can see here our test pattern is saying they're also backwards. So there's a flip UV button here. We can mirror the UV along the U coordinate. You can just toggle it back and forth. You can see what it does. So at this point, they are uh, mirrored the correct way. Now, just to make a point, check this out. If I go to point mode and I select some points and then move them out, and then I go back to poly mode and I flip the UV, it's actually flipping the entire UV pattern. It was hard to see just now because it was symmetrical, but it's actually flipping the UV around. So just wanted you to know that when you use that command, it's not some internal magic happening. It's actually taking the UV shell and flipping it. So at that point, it's out of the way. We can forget about it, and uh, we'll come back to that later. Um, it may also be a good time to hide it. Sometimes I hide geometry. I have some keyboard shortcuts set up for that. So I'm just going to hide those polygons. So at this point, we have more of an open shell, something we're probably more used to working with when UV mapping. And now we can really start to hack it apart. I said I would probably want to apply some graphics to the top of the tank and some graphics to the sides. And I probably don't care too much about this region right here. So let's make our seam right there. So I think that this spot right here is probably going to be a good place to start selecting the side. And so the top of the tank can bleed all the way down to here. So let's try a loop selection. My keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to start by selecting this, and then I'm going to use this really cool selection tool that I love. I think I've done a screencast about it before. If you hold V and go to select, you can get the fill selection. And because I already have these edges on the, the, this loop of polygons selected, I can hold shift and click the fill on the inside. Now I have all those polys selected. I love that feature. So now if I go to the top view, I can continue selecting. I'm going to use the uh, live selection tool, uncheck only select visible elements. So it selects right through my view. I'm just going to select all of these. So this is going to be the group of polygons that is mapped on the top of my fuel tank. So at this point, I can pretty much do another assigned UV coordinates. But there's a problem. When I go to my texture view, I just see that my texture is in the space of the screen. It doesn't move when I move my view, and it's sort of stuck there. That's because, well, this is UV. This is now UV coordinates. Before I project again and go to the tags menu and say assign UV coordinates, which I can't do right now, I need to actually switch this back to flat projection or again, whatever projection I feel like. In this case, I'm going to choose flat projection again. And you can see the uh, coordinates of the projection are still the way I left them, which is fine. Uh, but I will be rotating them. So I'm going to go to the side view, just so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to move this. It looks like some of my axes are locked. Looks like I have no Z control. That is weird. Let me switch back to my standard view. Wow. What's going on there? Ah. <laughs> I misclicked. I was not in the move texture command. I believe I was in the use texture mode command. I actually want the use texture axis mode. 
I don't want to move the texture around. I want to move the entire sort of coordinates of the texture. Okay. So, as I said, I don't typically use this layout, so there's a few buttons that I'm not familiar with. So once I'm at this point, I can rotate this texture so it's pretty much parallel with the surface I want to deal with. So if we go back to the perspective view, you can see that the textures are being projected pretty much spot on. There's very little, if no, distortion happening, which is great. That's exactly what we want. You can see once we fall off the edge, there's distortion like crazy. But that's okay. We're going to handle those later. Now, if you're not new to UV mapping, you probably know what I'm going to do next because I have the polygons I'm dealing with selected. They're all pretty much distortion free. And at this point, I can go right here to my tags menu and say assign UV coordinates. One of the first things you'll notice if I unhide my polygons at the bottom is that those still have their coordinates assigned. You can see them right here. So now, if I go to the UV view and I go to my UV polygons mode, you can see these polygons I've just selected and I can just move them away. So at this point I have two shells. And I can scale it up, scale it down. You see it covers more and less of the map but I can just put it over here for now. At this point, the remaining polygons, which I can select by using my selection tool in this view, are just the polygons around the side. Now this is a tricky one. We have two choices. We can, cre we can treat these as two separate shells. In other words, split it right down the back here and have a left side and a right side. Or we can treat it as one shell. If we treat it as one shell, the advantage we get is that we can flow graphics from one side all the way over to the other without a seam. If we treat it as two shells, we have the advantage of minimizing distortion. So let's 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 just treat it as two shells right now, just just so I can demonstrate what's going on, and uh, also just to demonstrate some of the relaxation tools Cinema 40 has for relaxing the UVs. I'm actually not going to project them. I think they're fine just the way they are the relax tool is going to handle some of that for us. So I mentioned I'll split it into two shells. How do we do that? We just select the polygons here in the UV view. I'm going to have to deselect these. So I have just the left side polygon selected. I'm just going to move them on over. I'm, I'm, I've basically broken them off. All you have to do is move them a little bit and they're no longer considered part of the same shell. So you have to be careful when working in the polygon mode. You might accidentally tear off some polygons. But in this case, I've done what I wanted to do, which is I want to separate these two into two separate shells. Now, let's just attack the problem at hand. I'm going to go back to my screencast user view, go to my UV edit view, nice and big. So at this point, we have the bottom part, the top part, the left, and the right. We can start relaxing the shells. So typically what someone does is they come in here and they say, okay, this shell, I'm just going to go to my relax UV panel and I'm just going to relax it. Good. Looks good. I'm going to take this one as well. I'm going to relax it too. All right. Nice. Um, here's the top of the fuel tank. Let's relax that so it smooths out nicely. You can see Cinema does a really good job of uh, smoothing out these areas here. There's no overlapping polygons. Now it's a pretty tricky bit of geometry and it handled it well. And you come back over here and you say, yeah, I'm just going to relax that one too. That's underneath the fuel tank. We don't we don't care about that anyway. It looks a little bit strange there. It looks like, like part of it didn't go properly. Well, we can deal with that later. It's a good thing it's not a, a, a vital part of the tank. It's underneath. So even if there is some distortion, you won't see it. Although I'm Pretty sure there's ways to take care of that so the relax method goes a little bit better. If we go back to our main view here, we can see that in general it looks like things are pretty distortion free. And I think the main reason for this is because we have so many different pieces. We have four shells. We can actually rotate these a little bit. So 
we get a more legible display. Remember this seam here is the seam behind the tank. So this is like we slice the tank here and then we unfold it each part, each each half. There we go. So the numbers sort of line up a little bit better. And we can see that while the numbers do look pretty square, there is still a little bit of distortion, but there's not much. And again, it's because we split it up into so many pieces. So at this point, you could pretty much take this object and paint on it. And as long as you don't cross the seams here or around back here, you'll be fine. Now, if you split two shells like this and you want to rejoin them, you can project them again and just don't tear the UV off. Or you can do this little trick. I'm not sure if this is supposed to work this way, but it's, it's, it's part of my workflow. This is what I do if I get in a bind. So what I can do is we have these two shells. They're clearly separate. And as far as I know, I don't think Cinema 4D has a way to join them once they've been separated. So I'm just going to take them and I'm going to pretend I didn't separate them. I'm just going to put them to overlap each other. Now this probably won't work for meshes with the, that have a lot more polygons, but it works for simpler meshes like this. What you do is in the Move tool, you just need to make sure snapping is on, point snapping. And then I just take these points and you basically just put them back together. It's like you're manually stitching it. I really hope that if someone's watching this video and knows of a way to do this automatically, they let me know because that would be a pretty cool feature. But at this point, I'm basically stitching these UVs back together. And this would be a real pain if the mesh was very dense. But like I said, in that case, you're probably just better off projecting the mesh again. And so at this point, sure, they're together because I turned on snapping. But the cool thing is Cinema 4D will now treat this as one solid shell again. If I go to the Live Selection tool and Poly Mode and I select just these polygons here, and I hit the Relax command, notice that it relaxed it all and it didn't tear apart or anything. It's because as far as Cinema 4D is concerned, this is one solid shell now. And it means right here that you can now paint from one side of the tank all the way over to the other. Now, there is still distortion here. You're going to see it a lot better if we scale these shells down. So let's grab our rectangular selection tool. Let's scale that down. There actually is a command in Cinema 4D that'll, that'll pack all these together in the same map for you. But I'm going to do it manually here because I feel to. So at this point, we've packed our shells sloppily into that UV space. And now that the squares are bigger, you can really see some of the distortion happening. So, you know, if you picture your logo or, or a company logo or something on here, you're going you're gonna to get, it'll, it'll follow the contours of the fuel tank perfectly, but it's still going to be slightly distorted. There is a way to prevent that from happening. Um, and I will show you that in a little bit. But just because it's a quicker demonstration, I'm going to show you what happens if you didn't break this up into so many pieces. Meaning this is, you know, three or four pieces. Four pieces if we, uh, four pieces if we tear this off like it was before. Um, so let's imagine we tried to do these three pieces as one. So I think the way we would do that is with all of these polygons selected. Again, going back to our texture tag and saying, let's project these as flat mapping. It's already looking down from above, like how I started it. So let's, let's go with that. And now that we have all of these polys here selected, let's say tags, assign UV coordinates. So at this point in our UV map, we have this fuel tank from the top down completely continuous surface no seams no areas for uh, for 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 your you know like a beautiful falcon or whatever you're gonna paint on the tank to have to have seams and sort of ruin the effect so at this point we can take this and we can say okay let's uh, let's let's just relax it 
And basically what we have is something that's kind of hideous. Um, it's kind of uneven. Uh, there's a lot of distortion. Um, it's 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 really not usable. I mean, you could use it, but if you try to apply graphics on this, see some of these squares are huge, and some of them are pretty pretty small, pretty average sized. And here you can really see the distortion going crazy. This is the problem my uh, my reader had when when he. He emailed me and asked me to do a little bit of a screencast or tutorial on this stuff. He essentially has a big smooth fuel tank that he's trying to UV map and it seems like the right way to do it because his tank is really nice and smooth and contoured um, but he's getting all this distortion. So unfortunately I don't know of a way to not get distortion when you use just one shell. So what I mean by just one shell again is this is one continuous UV area. You can paint on this continuously and I'm sure it'll look great, all the brush strokes and stuff, but if you want to apply anything rigid like logos or symbols and stuff, it's it's just not gonna work really well. But there is a bit of a middle ground. So let me see if I can sort of um, explain how that would work. The idea is that when we just told Cinema 40 to relax this UV map, we said just go for it, do whatever you want, relax by any means necessary. And that's how we got this strange shape. However, if we were to be a little bit more rigid about what we ask Cinema 40 to do, I just hit the undo key until I was quite quite back to here. Um, yeah, if we were to restrict what we told Cinema 40 it was allowed to do when it relaxed, we would get better results. So let's try a few things. The first thing we can try is to basically say, okay, Cinema 40, when you're unwrapping and relaxing these UVs, I want you to keep these polygons along the top here untouched. Why? Well, because we, we already know that those are distortion free. As a matter of fact, if the main focal point of this model was applying something to the top of the fuel tank, this is pretty much the area we would want to keep 100% distortion free. We can actually do that really easily. Earlier on I selected a loop of polygons to define the top of the tank. We're going to do that again, except we're going to deselect. So if I move to my polygon selection here, we have all these polys selected. Now remember, the UV coordinates have already been assigned. We just haven't relaxed them yet. So at this point, I'm going to go for my loop selection, and I'm going to hold control to deselect those polygons and then I'm going to go for my fill selection I'm going to hold control to deselect those polygons what we're left with is the only polygons we have selected are the ones that are kind of partially distorted actually now that I'm looking at it it looks like we may want to also include this outside loop pair of polygons so I'm just going to select those as well so the idea is that any polygons here that are not selected won't be relaxed which is what we want. So let's go back to the texture view. And you can see here that those the, the deselection we did in the main view is reflected in the texture view. And at this point, we can basically hit our relax function again, and we get a different kind of distortion happening. What we have is we have the rest of the tank completely bloated and expanded, but that area we told Cinema 40 to leave untouched, well, it's pretty much untouched. So if we go back to this texture view now, we can see that we have distortion, but it's a different kind of distortion. For instance, if your graphic was a bird on the top of the tank with its wings spread and then fire trailing, <laughs> I'm really digging deep here, and then fire trailing off the wing tips, flaming down the side of the tank, this would work just fine because it doesn't matter if your swirls of fire get distorted as they're going down the side of the tank. It may actually add to the effect. So in this case, the bird, the actual structure of the bird on the top of the tank would be fine. It's completely distortion free. But let's take this thinking a step further. Here we see we were able to preserve distortion on certain parts of the tank by telling Cinema 4D, hey, don't relax these parts. We can actually allow Cinema 4D a little bit more leeway by saying, oh, by the way, you're allowed to slice the UV map here if it'll help you. So let's look at that technique. So 
I've undid, undone, I've, I've, I've used the undo command a few times. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to go back to when we had the entire tank selected. In this case, I still want to preserve just a little bit of the distortion free tank up here. So I'm going to use my live selection tool. Only select visible. Well, no, that's that's for the UV view. So I'm going to go to polygons, live selection tool. It's, it's actually two different live selection tools, one for polygons, one for UVs. So I'm going to go back to the live selection tool for polygons. And I'm going to say only select visible elements. And I'm going to deselect the polygons immediately around the fuel filler. Right? So those are the polygons I want to be untouched. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to go to the top view. Maybe not the top view. I might select some stuff underneath, which I don't want. So I'm going to go to the top view. And I'm just going to take not the top view. Ah, I'm in this view. <laughs> I'm in perspective. And I'm basically going to try to select the edges that come down the front of the tank. Reason being, most designs I've seen on motorcycles, there's not much detail at the front top of the fuel tank. If there's any detail in the artwork, it's back here. So let's preserve those polys. Let's t tell Cinema 40 that it's okay to slice this part of the tank if it wants to. So I'm going to go to my edge view, edge mode, not view. And uh, I'm going to go to one of my favorite tools, the path selection. And I'm just going to select the path of polygons that comes right down the front of the tank. That was super easy. And we can see, let's just make sure, yeah, it looks like the top shell stops here and the bottom shell starts here. So you can see the seam. So I have those edges selected. Good, that's it. Once we have that, we have those edges selected. We have these polys deselected. We can go back to our texture view. And even though you can't see edges in the texture view, the texture view understands edges because you can say cut selected edges. Yes, please. At this point, we can run our relax command again. And what we should see is we should see the front part of the fuel tank split in two, which will give the fuel tank a little bit more leeway when distorting the rest of itself. So if we hit apply, you can see it's done just that. I think the problem here though, the reason you're seeing these overlapping polys here is because we've actually told it to preserve these polys. We've told it not to distort these. So again, you can see that it's working within the constraints we give it. So if I undo and I basically say, okay, you know what Cinema 40? You can work on all of these polygons if you want, but that edge selection is still there. And I'm saying cut the fuel tank up until the fuel filler hole. At this point, if I hit apply, it's sort of flipped around there. Um, you, you can see that the distortion again is minimized, but it's still one continuous piece. So let me show you a little trick. What if you didn't want it to flip around like that? That's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is choose two points that are vertical from each other and tell Cinema 40 to pin those points when it's unwrapping. So you see a lot of the features of Cinema 40's unwrapping tools are kind of hidden sometimes. So in this case, all we do is we use our selection tool and we say let's select those two points and pin those. Those points aren't allowed to move. One thing we're doing here is we're actually setting the scale. So we're saying don't make the unwrapped mesh any bigger or smaller than this polygon is. Use this polygon as a reference. Pin it right there. So what we're saying is unwrap all of these polygons pin these two points so they don't move relative to each other or the neighbors and then cut this line right here so if we go back to the polygon mode and we say pin point selection cut selected edges and then apply we get that now what we can see is that the two points we pinned stayed and the edges we selected got cut the rest of the fuel tank has been unwrapped to sort of minimize distortion. Um, now what you will notice is just because of, I'm guessing because of the way the unwrapping algorithm works, there is a little bit of distortion that's often introduced by pinning points. It's probably because it, it's, it's sort of iterative. It actually runs the unwrap command over and over and over until it sees that there's very little change happening and then it stops, I believe. So what we can do to fix that 
is uh, remember that we have our pin to neighbors checkbox selected. I believe it's selected by default. And we can go to our UV polygons mode and we can select just the polygons around the area that was previously pinned. Now, this selection I've just made has a bunch of neighboring polygons, which means even if we unwrap this, it's go only going to unwrap the inside of our selection. It's not going to bleed to the outside edges. So if we hit unwrap again, we can uncheck cut selected edges, uncheck pinpoint selection. So we're just back to our default mode now. If we hit apply, we can see it's sort of fixed that area. Now, let's select this unwrapped behemoth of a shell, scale it down, and let's go back to this view. And you can see here the distortion is a lot more manageable. This square is a little bit bigger than the others, but not by much. These wrap around smoothly and you can pretty much see that most of this stuff is really manageable. You can paint all over this fuel tank. You should be able to apply a logo here with minimum distortion and the only seam is right here at the front where it's probably going to be a solid color anyway. So those are a few UV mapping t tips. I really hope they're useful. Uh, at this point we have a fully mapped UV fuel tank and I've showed you guys how to map it in four pieces, one piece, uh, three pieces, how to join some UV seams, how to make multiple shells, and you know, I think the point of this screencast is that it, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish when painting your fuel tank, and you, you, should, you should just go from there, and make sure to deselect the polygons that you don't want to distort, and that'll give you a little bit more control, and you can always select uh, some edges and tell Cinema 4D to cut those edges. You can take one UV mesh area and tear it away from the rest of it so that it distorts more cleanly. There's a lot of different things you can do. But the fuel tank is such a difficult thing to UV map because it has curves in so many dimensions. Um, you know, if your fuel tank had a pinstripe going down the center, well, you know what? That's where you want your seam because you can't really see a seam between white and white. So you put, you cut your fuel tank right down the center, and then you project from the left. You could even project from this angle if that's where you wanted your logo, and then you select those polygons and say, "Don't unwrap those. Just unwrap the ones around it," and that should work. So I know this screencast has been kind of a crazy one because it deals with UV mapping which from talking to other people in the 3D world most people hate. I love UV mapping. To me it's it's like unfolding a puzzle. Every time I do a UV map it, it's, it's just awesome. I really enjoy it. And uh, yeah I just wanna create the screen the screencast for you guys. And I wanna thank Mirko for uh, or Mirko I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. I've only ever spoken to him over email. But I want to thank him for his email that sort of inspired me to do this screencast. And I hope I've answered all your questions. If you have any more questions, just uh, post it in the comments section on my site or in the comments of this video. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep the discussion going. Because I know UV mapping, there's, there's a lot of technique. There's a lot of different ways to do things. And I'm sure that the way I've showed you guys here isn't necessarily the right way. It's just the way that I do it. So... Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, thanks for watching, if you're still watching. This was a long one. Um, and until next time.